Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on, on um, what is it, Mistletoe and Holly from Blue Fern, and we are on page two. Page two. Make sure that's right side up. So there's page one, here's page two. Page two, we're going to have two features, left and right. Do I have that right? Mm, yes. Maybe. Gotta think about that for a second. I cut out most of my parts. So this one goes up this way. Okay. You can tell the pattern goes like this. Okay. Put this one together. It goes this way. And then this is, oh, nope, I had it wrong. That's the right direction. Yeah, okay. So the pattern's continuous. That's why I was kind of juggling it around. So this is from the 12 by 12, and um, it comes across. And you can see there's a little bit of space. So we're going to put a half inch on either side and a half inch in the middle. So I'm going to move this aside. And I'll show you what we're doing. So we're going to do two of this design. So we're going to start with 11. Is it? Yes, 11 by 8. 11 by 8. And then you're going to score at half inch, 4 and 3 quarters, and 9. Half inch, 4 and 3 quarters, and 9. And it's going to go in this way, right? i got to keep looking at that so I don't mess it up. Yeah. So this is actually ultimately going to become a pocket. So you, you're, we've got two options. One, you can run a bead down and, and just glue that pocket. Or two, you can take a one-inch strip and um, score it at half inch. And then I'm going to actually create a gusset. I, I find this easier than doing everything at eight and a half inches, cutting all this off and leaving a flange. So that's just my personal preference. So I'm going to put a little tick mark here. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to build my, oh, I left my pencil somewhere. I hate it when that happens. Do I have something else handy? Yeah, this will do. Just put a little mark in. I was in the other room earlier mess around on my computer. So it just needs to be slightly shorter than the pocket so that you don't get um, any interference here with the hinge when you go to fold, fold it over. So I just did a little mark there. I'm going to freehand cut it and I'm going to use this strip to measure the other side. Now if you don't want to do this, you can just do a bead of glue and close it. The value in, in using these little flanges is when you put them in, um, you have the full expanse of the pocket. So it allows you to put more in the pocket and it allows you to use the full length of the pocket, both of those things. So I think there's some value in that. Um, if you want your pocket to be more snug, glue is the answer or, or a line of tape. Okay. I'll just use my hook tool to burnish it down both sides you can miter your corners if you want I'm not going to I'm only going to trim anything off the top if it if it comes up over the edge I'm 
looks like it's going to, so I might as well trim it before I stick it. Okay, so there's my flange, right? We're going to do the other side. Let's go ahead and do a quick dry fit before I put tape on it. It's going to be fine. So again, you have an option here. To me, the fastest is the glue. But if you want to, um, but if space is of concern and you don't really know how much you're going to try to put in the album at the time of build, um, the flanges will give you a little little wiggle room there. We finally are getting back to our normal San Diego weather. Our humidity is back. To its normal level. I actually spent some time in the garden today because I could. <laughs> and kind of cleaning up a little bit after that storm. Okay, remove the tape on both sides. Everything we're doing, we're going to do one more time on the other side. So if you're gluing, you're going to glue both. And if you're doing this, well, you don't have to. You can do one of each if you want. There we go, there's our pocket, and you can see because of the flange, you get a little bit more, you have act, the ability to add more volume. Okay, so this is the flap as it's going in. So this hinge is actually going to go toward the center. So I'm going to stop and go ahead and um, make the flange for this side. And I thought I had done two one and a half one inch strips, but I don't see one. So I'll do that real quick. I'm kind of fishing for a, yeah, a scrap where I don't have to. Oh, excuse me. That's not quite big enough. So. Is it one? Actually, it might be. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'm going to score this at half inch. Scored it half inch, and I'm going to lay it in my trimmer and cut it right there at one inch. After I unpack my trimmer, because I set everything on top of it. Okay, now I need to move that over a half inch. Okay, here's my strip. Fold it in half. Might as well tape it while it's one piece. shall see.
Yep, that worked out perfect. Darn near anyway. Okay. Okay, I'll fold this down. And now our pockets are in place. So now it's going to go in like this. So before we do that, we set these aside and we're going to add our strips. So these strips, ah, they're so hard to pick up. I'm not sure what page they came off of, but there's a page that has this little bit of wood strips and it's just on the ends. And so I cut, I actually did four because um, I was trying to decide if I wanted to do um, dark on the outside and light on the inside or vice versa. So we're going to make that decision after we decorate these panels so we can lay them down and move these around and decide which way to go. So these are, each one of these are a half inch and I'm, sh I'm sure I haven't cut through there it is. So this is the 8x8 eight eight, and this came from the 12x12. 12 12. So I cut these planks out. And you can see light and dark, light and dark. So I have um, two of each because I had two packs of the 12x12s. 12 12, so I cut those out. So we'll set those aside. And then this was the third option to run down the middle, but I only have one. And we'll go ahead and get started. That doesn't belong here. Oh, yes, it does. This goes on the inside. Sorry. What did I do with it? <laughs> I dropped it and it disappeared immediately. Ah, I'll dig for it in a second. Oh, there it is, I think. Yes, this is Christmas cookies. I think it goes on the bottom. And this goes, yeah, that's what I was going to do. So this together makes a recipe. And then I had these on the outside, which was just kind of a nice, soft panel. Okay. Everything you're looking at is from the 12 by 12. This doesn't go Sorry, I did one of those things where I put it up before I should. So now I gotta dig it back up. It should stand up because now I can't remember which which way I was gonna go. I'm pretty sure I was gonna do the recipe. Oh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I may, we may have a choice to make there. Okay. Sorry. I feel terrible. Here it is. I was going to say, I feel terrible. I had this all laid out and then I shuffled it back. Okay. okay. This is from the 12 by 12 pack and there's the full image. I don't know the name of sheet. So we're going to use the flip side of that and go in just like this. So let's go ahead and get these pieces in, or at least set in, because we are going to have to do some magnets. So we're going to have to shuffle through which ones those are. And let's do the top. Okay, so we've got these two thin strips that go over the pocket. And then we've got these two a little bit bigger that go behind the pocket. I'm going to do a quick dry fit, but it should, should be right. Again, these patterns are from the 12 by 12. 
It's a little bit bigger gap than I wanted. I have inked the edges. I am using mahogany and powder puff. If you don't have that, I'm just using a very dark brown. Espresso would work. So, because of the way I trimmed this, I knew that a small part of this was going to go under the pocket. Uh, not under, but into the pocket. And um, if you are going to glue these two tabs down, lay this panel down first and then glue on top of it. Otherwise, you'll wind up having to come back and trim that down a little bit because you can't tuck it into the pocket if these two edges are glued shut. Obviously. It's obvious, but it's also very easy to forget. <laughs> I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I love this paper. It feels so good in your hands. It's so heavyweight. It's perfect for this kind of thing or any kind of mixed media, anything you want to do. It's not the kind of paper you want to go spend a lot of time folding. It's too thick. I wouldn't recommend it for covering a box or anything like that. It's just too thick. Okay, now we've got these outsides done so we can make uh, a plan for our half inch strips. So it's going to go like this, and here's our strip options. We have two dark. Because they'll have to go in before we put these panels in. And one light. That's option one. Option two is the dark in the middle and the two lights on the outside. And I don't know about you guys, but I think I like it this way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and lay down these three strips. Dry fit it real quick. And I'm putting the darkest side toward the center um, for more contrast against the, the other pattern. And before I go too much further, I'm going to flip it over and make sure my orientation is still correct. Yep, that's up. This is up. Okay. So, let's go ahead and set those aside again and install these two panels. No, oops, got backwards. Panels are going to go like so. So the idea is that we have another strip that's in the middle and you can just center it, but I wanted, I wanted to actually lay it out to make sure that my midpoint, which I've already previously marked here, stays the same after I lay in my two panels. Because as you know, once you start folding paper and layering it, it changes things a little bit. So then I also, and also if there if there's any variation on the border to the, on the left and right that causes the finished line to move slightly hopefully that makes some sense to you guys so looking judging from what i see right now if i butt this right up against these two strips 
it looks like my center is off I don't know maybe a six thirty second of an inch which is fine but that just means I want to consider that when I put this in don't center this on that center it on the two panels hopefully that makes sense okay so let's do that let's get this one down so um, again I'm gonna I want to square off the top and bottom and I'm gonna push this scored edge and here's my flange. I'm going to push my scored edge into this decorative piece that I just put down. There we go. I'm going to repeat that process over here. So the, the flanges for the, or the hinges are going toward the center, not toward the outside in this case. And now just to demonstrate what I had said before, there's the tick mark for the center. So you can see it's slightly off. And, um, oh, you know what? I was supposed to put my stupid strip down first. <laughs> so now <laughs> to recover from this, I need to trim my strip or lift my panels. So that's why I had the tick mark there. But I, like I said, I designed this a few days ago and I forgot. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to lift these because I haven't burnished them. Then I'm going to lay this down and then put the panels back in. When I come back, it'll all be done the right way. Actually, you guys know me. I like to show you the pain that I go through too. It's not just you. Everybody makes mistakes, even people that have made hundreds of books. So um, I'm just going to leave it run. Yeah. Because I haven't burnished this, it's coming up relatively easy. I don't hear any paper tearing. There's a little tear in the tape. Everything's fine. So whenever you're doing these decorative strips to sort of split up a layout, it, you know, you just need to try to keep in mind that those go in first. You know, it's kind of like that magnet thing. If you're going to use magnets put those in before the designer paper, which is what we'll do next after we get these reset. And hopefully this isn't taking too long. There you go. Worst case, if these weren't coming up as easy, I can just feel it. You know, I'm so used to how paper feels. If it wasn't coming up easy, I would be breaking out my unglue. Uh, undo. Unglue. Undo. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and check this center line. So, do, 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 do. Actually, you know what? My mark was off. Yeah, my mark was off. I think actually it is going to go because it looked like it needed to go over about a 32nd of an inch, and it does. So, there you go. So, I know that's my center. So, let's get some glue on this and get it put down. And then, what's going to happen is just a tiny bit of this strip is going to be underneath each one of the hinges which is preferable to having it butted up against the hinge because the hinge is moving anything that it's moving against has a chance of buckling so the idea is you want to put your hinge on top of that strip so it's moving this way and not rubbing against any edges so that's also why I try to make my decorative strips a little bit bigger than they need to be to uh, accommodate that. Okay, there we go. Sorry for that. Sorry for interrupting your normally scheduled program. <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. Okay. So yeah, it is covering it ever so slightly. And very much sticking to me. <laughs> okay, so that's in. Repeat that process. Pushing that scored edge right up to this.
there you go. Okay, so you see there's a lot of room for photos. And then of course it opens this way as well. Now because everything is in, that's the other reason I like a space here is it's not bumping right into this page, which would keep it from laying down. It's already got some heft to it, but if there was no space between them, it wouldn't it wouldn't lay down. It just simply wouldn't. Okay. okay. Now we have And this came from the 12 by 12. It's the Christmas tree in the window. There's the cookie recipe. This is that little sliver of the window that I cut off. So I'm just going to keep it flowing the direction the paper was flowing. And I'm freaking out a little. So yeah, I just want to check I was going the right way again. Particularly because this pattern is very directional. So it's very hard to recover from putting this down wrong. So this one was not part of it. These are the two because the size. I can tell that now. There we go. So together they make a Christmas cookie recipe. I don't know if it really does, but that's what it says. Okay, I think I've got everything inked and trimmed. Well, let's see. That's the other option. And I like this a lot, but I don't know about that. Um, yeah. So let's just look at that for a second. And then that's just way too bold. So I know I want these down, so let's do that first. Let's try fit this. Then we'll make the decision about the cookie paper. Oh, this is neat. Who is this? I guess just the two, two of the four are. So it's not obvious, I gave you the measurements, but it's not obvious, so I'm going to point out that each one of these panels is four and a quarter wide. Because it's four and a quarter wide, that means that you can put, you know, a four by six here and still have some border around it. So it looks like we're all done now. So when I make flaps and I'm doing things like that, I'm thinking about two things. One, where am I going to put a picture and how much will I have to crop or resize if you're, if you're somebody who um, resizes or creates collages and cuts down their photos, it, it, this is less of an issue. But the, And the other thing is, how do I make the best use of my 8x8s and 12x12s, right? And so when you're talking about 12x12s, you really you know, want to do everything in, if you're doing most of my albums, they're not taller than 8 inches. So I think of things in increments of 4 inches. So 4 inches across gets me 3 panels in a 12x12 12 12, um, with some leftover. So that's kind of the things I think about and why the panels come out to be pretty standard straight across the board it's because photos are standard and the uh, paper that you're you're using is pretty standard which is for me 8 by 8 or 12 by 12 I um I dabble a little bit in cards but not much um I'd be doing the same consideration on 6 by 6 if I was a card maker how can I get the most out of my 6 by 6 given their standard sizes for cards just uh you know, just some things to think about as you're planning your albums. See, that just seems too busy. I think that's why I chose this. This just sort of calms everything down because there's not as many colors in it. And it does look like I already inked it. Oh, shoot. I did it, you guys. Let me do it. I need a magnet. This needs a magnet, too. So I'm going to stick one in there. 
real quick. It's too busy blabbing about sizing. Oh, look, and I even have them sitting over here like a dum-dum. Oh, well. You know how that goes. So, I use the, I like to use the metal palette to kind of lift it. And then you need something that is not magnetic to push your magnet in. Sometimes it just wants to fall in. Sometimes I have to push it in. And then I'm going to seal it shut, and then we'll find yeah, that's pretty, that went in pretty easy. It's not deep enough. And if you try to use your metal palette, you just wind up pulling it right back out. Okay, that should be my limit of mistakes on this page. I've made two big ones. You can recover from them, but it's like, oh, it's so much easier if you don't make a mistake in the first place. I didn't get quite enough tape on there. Okay, I'm gonna test it one more time. Love that snap. I live for it. Okay, where's my recipe? Here it is. I'm going to repeat that on the next page since I didn't get my bag made down. So when you make this mistake, if you figure it out halfway through, it's ideal because all you have to do is place it under the one that's glued down and then it's easy to locate the second one. If you actually get both panels down before you figure it out, it's a lot harder. It can be done, but it just takes a few more steps. And then, of course, there's always the, the ultimate fallback plan, which is cover it up with an embellishment or just plan to put a photo over it. And if you're putting the putting stuff in a photo. If this was my photo album and I knew I was putting pictures in it, I would not go through this trouble. I would make sure my photo covered it. And that would be simple enough. But these are up for sale. I don't know what people are going to put in them or where. So I don't want to limit their options. Which, if you weren't aware of that, they are, they are for sale in our shop. There is a link to Daphne's Creations and these finished albums. Oh, I missed a side. I hate it when that happens. That's three <laughs> in one page. I thought I looked all the way around it. I guess not. See how obvious that is compared to this. I don't know. I don't care for I don't want my white core to stand out, especially on a what is sort of a vintage paper. Now, if it was a white-backed paper, which I've done some albums like that, I don't, I don't ink it. It's only if it's vintage-looking paper to start with that I ink it. So, now I've got to recover from that problem. It's not really that hard. It's hard to not get messy. <coughs> my goodness. Mm, the end of my hat is a bit dry. All right. That's an improvement. It's not so stark. Okay, now we're going to locate the second magnet over here. And this time I'm going to use enough tape that I don't have to fight with it.
We're trying. Go. So I know a lot of you are repeat viewers, but there are some new ones that come now and then. The reason I put a little bit of glue over the tape is once you flip the paper over, that tape is going to stick to your paper, period. Even if you have glue on this side. So if you need to adjust it slightly, uh, you wind up tearing that up. So just by putting a little bit of glue, it kind of, it's a float, that means it's not going to hit the tape until I push it into the tape, if that makes sense. Um, like even right now, I probably could have trimmed that a little bit. It's, it's barely touching it, but it's not going to stick until I push it. It'll let me, as you can see, shift it around. But if I hadn't put that little bit of glue on there, it would have stuck to the tape. There would have been no shifting. I would have had to peel it back up and start over. So you can either put it on the tape or you can make sure you have extra glue in the area of the magnet. And since it's hard to judge, um, I just put it on the magnet. <laughs> I don't have to figure out where to put it on the paper. Okay. So that is page two so far. Now we have these um, two panels on both sides to fill. So basically this is four and a quarter, four and a quarter by eight, right? And then we have four and a quarter, four and a quarter by eight. So the challenge with four and a quarter, even though it makes it great for photo size, four and a quarter is just a little bit too big for to use an eight by eight. But Having said that, <laughs> one of the things that I did was I made this side a little bit shorter because of this strip. So on this side, I'm going to need what looks like, basically I'm telling you you can use an 8x8. On this side, we need to cut it, it's one quarter. No, it's not going to be enough. I take that back. I thought it was going to be a little bit more. That would have been true if that was a one inch strip. So it looks like this is one eighth inch shorter this way than this. So this is four and one eight. If this was four and one eight, um, we could manage with uh, an eight by eight. So in this case, I'll probably do partial, you know, do a, use eight by eight and a 12 by 12 or a section of a 12 by 12. So I need a minute to pick out those patterns and um, then when we get back, we'll lay in those last four. And of course, we need to put magnets in. So actually, before I take a break, let's do that now so I don't forget. And then when I come back, all we have to do is lay in the paper. Okay, I'll do that one more time. I'm actually going to flip it over so it doesn't keep getting drawn to that magnet. And um, shift it down a little bit. I don't know why I just taped it to the table. I'm having a day, you guys. Okay. 
So another thing to keep in mind when you're doing pages with multiple layers and um, magnets, when, let's see, let's do it this way. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the large pocket that's created um, to actually adhere it to the hidden hinge. You have this large pocket. Um, but if you're going to use that, you need to make sure that the magnets on this side are not magnetized to the ones on this side. Because when you go to try to put something in that pocket, you're fighting against those magnets to get your insert to go in. So what you want to try to do is when you're laying in these magnets, if they're drawn to anything on the other side, flip them over. They'll be polar opposites. So they'll repel each other, making sliding in the pocket easier. It's a really easy thing to say, and it's very easy to forget. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. You know, if you find that you lay a magnet down, it's being drawn to something, you know, you, you haven't put on this page yet. It means it's being attracted to something on the flip side. And you'll want to, it, it only matters if you're using the pocket insert. If you're not using that, doesn't matter. If you're going to glue it shut, doesn't matter. But I've done that before, and I'm like, why isn't this going in? What's it stuck on? <laughs> and it's stuck on magnets from the front and back of the page. Okay, I'll be back shortly with uh, some designer papers to go inside the last feature of this page. Hey everyone, I'm back. It's Stephanie, and we're going to finish this uh, page two. So I picked up my pattern. So this is from my 12 by 12 collection pack or paper pad. Everybody's got a slightly different name. And uh, the bulk of the um, interesting print was over to the right. So I'm going to, I went from the right to the left. Um, so I'd have this full image and then still lots of room for your pictures. Oh my gosh, I just realized I left my glue open. So it might take a minute for it to start flowing again. So that's um, the left side. And then on the right side, I did the same thing. I picked a 12 by 12 with a very bold statement on one side. So this could be the decorative side. You, you can also cover it, but this side is clearly um, for pictures. So let's get back to this side. And um, before we took a break, we put our magnets in. So we should be good to go. So let me dry fit one more time. I inked the, um, the uh, designer paper. So, so if the magnet stuck to something, this should go pretty quickly. And then we can wrap up page two. This is, uh, and I mentioned it over and over again throughout these videos, very thick designer paper. So um, I've talked a little bit about things to do with it. Um, for one thing, oh, you know what? I just realized I didn't cut it short enough for the trim. Oh, how about that? You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and just cover it up. Um, I was planning on using an 8x8 um, and using that half inch so that um, the 8x8 eight eight would stretch across two pages, which it won't. Um, and that's because each one is four and a quarter. And I was thinking both of them were four inches, which is much more normal for me in terms of uh, flap sizes. So but this is fine. I'm just going to glue right over that. And if you put it down, you can either trim a half inch off this side or just glue over it like I did. Um, I was trying to... Um, use 8 by 8s on, the, on the, um, this part of the design and not cut into a 12 by 12 but it just didn't work out and I'm fine with that as well. Oh, so back to um, the thick cardstock. When you have cardstock this thick it's really important to get your glue all the way to the corner uh, because it's so stiff it's going to try to pull away from your cardstock. Most of the time that's not an issue and also the glue will spread enough to cover the corners, 
Just make sure you've got enough glue in your corners. Um, or after you lay everything down, go back through your book and um, check your corners. Make sure they're laying down and not trying to pop up on you. And I this corner, but also especially on anything that's against um, a hinge with any kind of a bevel. Um, like this isn't laying down flat, so you really need to pay particular attention to those corners. This is pretty flat. It's not fighting anything. This is fighting the bend of the page. So just go back and check that. It's no big deal. If you don't get it the first time around, go back around and... If you can't get the tip of your glue bottle under the corner, then take a toothpick or a, a, a pen from your sewing kit, put a line of glue on it, and just go right under it. So it's not a big deal. It can definitely be solved. Okay, so that's the left side. Now let's work on the right side. Let's make sure one more time these, and it's hard to see straight down, but when I say there's a bit of a bevel, it will open, but it's not going to lay flat because of the nature of the bulk on this side. So there's always going to be tension on this side, this side of the page. It doesn't mean you can't push on it, it just means there's always going to be a bit of, of tension. <coughs> yeah, I ain't good. I hope everybody's doing good. We got the California weather seems to be back, although it was quite warm today, but pretty normal. Levels of humidity. And then we're supposed to get a little cooling trend, which I hope everybody else gets to appreciate as well. It's been kind of a an interesting year weather wise. Well, and not just weather wise, just in general, right? Okay, let me go ahead and use this and brush it down a little bit. I like this page. I like uh, the interactivity of this page. And that's one of the reasons I really like uh, 8 by 10 or 10 by 8 is you can do a couple of things. Um, trying to do this design on an 8 by 8, you can do it, but it feels very crowded to me. So again, I'm going to go ahead and cover that strip. Although we carefully placed it, it doesn't really matter, but the one in the center is still going to remain. Like I said, I was really trying to utilize an 8x8 eight eight here. This didn't work out. <clears throat> oh, it's hard to cover that up at Christmas. So pretty. <clears throat> Nope, this side I did it right. Ah, take it back. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so that was the plan. <clears throat> Not executed, executed. <laughs> so you can see the difference. I like them both. I don't think anything visually changes by not having that strip. But on this page in particular, because of all these browns, I do think it looks nice. So there's a very slight change between the two. Um, because we're using 12 by 12s here and here, you have the option. Um, if we were going to use 8 by 8s, you needed a half inch there and a half inch here. So it's really up to you if you want to use a smaller version. Just make sure you add a half inch strip on both sides. And then, of course, as I mentioned, this remains the same. So we're going to walk through this one. Uh, since it's finished, let me put some cards in here. <clears throat> and this is the same card, just one's front and one's back. I'll do it this way. So they're both right side up. And then this one goes here. So this, as you can see, because the way we put our gusset in, your pocket goes end to end, depending on what you want to place in here. Um, but I'm going to use these two cards, and whatever you place in here, it should not exceed 
the width of these two panels. And again, this is four and a quarter, so you don't want it to go f further than that. Um, otherwise, when you go to try to open it, um, whatever is sticking out will interfere with this hinge. So it should not be wider than four inches. It can be taller, just not wider. Okay, so it opens up. So we have these two inserts, and it opens up left and right. Then we close those, and it opens up to the right, and then also to the left. And that, ladies and gentlemen, this page too. I hope you enjoyed uh, putting this together. Um, some new combination of elements, but at the end of the day, everything in an album is a flap, a pocket, or an insert, right? Could be a complicated flap, but there's really not much more to it. So I thank everyone for uh, hanging out with us here at Scrap and Create, tuning in, sharing your time with us. Love to hear your comments. Um, I'm, I've gotten really bad about getting back to people, except for with questions, just because I'm mad, because I'm terrible, because I can't keep up. And so that's it. Doesn't mean I don't read them, um, because I read through all of them just to make sure if there's a question uh, that needs to be answered, I can answer it. it. May take me a little bit longer than it used to. Um, it's just you know things have changed since COVID. Um, and things have opened back up. I've just gotten a bit busier with life. So again, if you have a question, make sure you put it there in the comments. And I do read your comments. If you need something urgently and you don't feel like I'm responding fast enough, hop on over to our website and send me an email and you will definitely get a response within 12 hours. Um, it's a little bit harder to say that on the web, on uh, YouTube because I might get three or 400 um, comments so it's a little bit higher, harder to dig out the questions but it's very easy on the website so if you have a question don't hesitate send it to me both in both places if you need to and I'll get back to you as quick as I can and as always this is Daphne from Scrapper Create thanks for watching